Hello everyone, it's Eric here, and in today's video, I thought I would share my thoughts on the new Bretonian release for Warhammer the Old World. So I just got my box set, Warhammer the Old World, I got the Bretonian side, and I think it's great. All the models are there that I love. I like really, I really liked everything from 20 years ago. I like it now. It's all there, pristine in its original glory. And but I couldn't help but notice that the, the studio painted this new box art in in a totally uh, in a very uniform fashion, as opposed to the older paint scheme, which was very eclectic. It was very diverse and and very colorful. And every night would had its own unique heraldry. And personally, I, I really like this style of painting quite a bit better than the new one and I think the new one is it's you know maybe you could argue it's a little easier on the eyes it's simpler it would take a little less time but I mean I feel like half the appeal of a Bretonian army for me is it's just it's this it's this total total army of unique and individual knights and I think it just creates a really nice opportunity for each individual knight to be like its own creative project and I get to think you know how can I make this knight unique and how can I push myself or create a unique color scheme that hasn't been done before? And I really like that kind of challenge. And if you're anything like me, then maybe you want to know what are the parameters for making your own heraldry on, on your knights. So I thought I'd share my observations that I've uh, kind of gleaned over the past, <laughs> say, 20 years or so. I mean, off and on, obviously, I don't think about this all the time. But, you know, I've been thinking about this for a little while and observed, and I used to have the old Bretonian army book so I'll share my, my observation okay so first I think it's important to recognize the distinctions and differences between each kind of class of knight in the Bretonian army book so this is a bit more so for people who are newer to uh, Warhammer the Old World and there were about four different types of knight in the army book and there is now there was back then and there is still today so the first type is errantry knights or knights errant so these are like younger knights who are trying to prove themselves and so kind of lunge themselves at the enemy kind of head first without overthinking things so they're not as skilled they're not as uh, disciplined i guess they don't have as much leadership but they're trying to prove themselves and important to note they don't have any ornamentations on their helmet so if you look at the bretonian knight sprue and you see the helmets and the bear heads that don't have any ornamentations or horse figures, <clears throat> you know, statues on their helmets, then you know that's a, that's a helmet for a knight errant. Like, basically, the uh, the knights errant are pretty much the same as the knights of the realm, except for their helmets. That's basically the only real difference. And sometimes the knights of the realm have shield icons on their shoulders, too. But, yeah, these are knights errant. These are knights of the realm. These are the uh, your standard knight. These are kind of your de facto choice, almost. They're a core choice for the army. You have to take at least one unit of these in uh, an illegal list nowadays. Whereas uh, the Knights Errant, uh, these are uh, kind of optional. And for every unit of Knights Errant, you have to have at least one unit of Knights of the Realm. So these are kind of your core Knights and very similar to Knights Errant. Or Errant. Sorry if I'm mispronouncing it. I think it's Errant. Similar to Knights Errant. Except the helmets have these fancy kind of insignias or symbols. And it's almost kind of like, I think it's more of like a, a symbol of office where it just it shows that they've accomplished something that they kind of display on their helmet. So these are kind of like uh, landowners and they kind of preside over a, a small territory and they protect it and they come together in times of war to, you know, ward off enemies. I think that's how the lore goes. So, yeah, so we have knights of the realm when a knight of the realm kind of wants more he becomes a questing knight which when he forgoes all his land and his possessions to kind of uh, seek the world and perform good deeds in hope of uh, becoming a grail knight so questing knights they don't they don't have any lances they always carry swords now these are pewter so they, they haven't re-released these but i think they will in the future but we'll see and these are the grail knights these are the top of the line knights when a when a questing knight kind of fulfills his quest he becomes a grail knight and you'll notice all these knights have a, a very similar kind of way of a similar color pattern not that they're all the same but they all have they use the same colors but in different ways so they all have the same horses and the same kind of kind of colors even though they're arranged differently like i said the thing to keep in mind when painting heraldry for box art Bretonian style, the legacy one, is to use all primary colors plus black and white. Now, when I say primary colors, I mean red, blue, yellow, and uh, and of course you can have a little bit of variation. So instead of like a pure blood red, you can use like a crimson red. Instead of a pure kind of ultramarine blue, you can use uh, like an azure kind of blue. Think maybe like a Calador sky. Instead of like a pure yellow, you can have a bit more of an orangish tint to your yellow but it should read as kind of pure saturated red blue or yellow or white and black and every 
every knight's heraldry uses these five colors in different ways and in the slight variations of those colors so there's no secondary colors on the box art schemes you can of course you can paint your knight however you want but if you're going for this look no <laughs> no secondary colors the only the only knight that, that should be painted in a secondary color is the green knight and he's painted green so but there's only one green knight so all right so now that we've established kind of the color choices for painting different knights let's talk about the heraldry or the the symbols on the barding and on the shields so in bretonia there's 14 provinces and each province has its own kind of history and its own kind of symbol characterized by say like a, an axe and this one or like a dragon or a castle or a deer so so the knight's heraldry or the symbol on their heraldry kind of dictates where they're from usually it, it's either this symbol f stray from their province or a variation of that symbol so think like you know if this is the province of carcassonne then you can have all these different kind of variants. I mean, these are just examples of variants, but, and you can kind of make a variant in the same kind of theme as this one, but these are just a way to gather ideas. Uh, Bretonia Knights, the plastic kit used to come with these really nice uh, decal transfer sheets that kind of did all the work for you. Or if you wanted heraldry on your knights and you know, you got five different transfers for the, for like four for the barding on the horse on the little shield icons on the horse and one for the icon on the shield so and you get 14 different uh sets of five transfers on this it was really nice but they don't they're not selling these right now and they don't come in the new uh, bretonian box set which is kind of disappointing i mean in my mind i'm, I'm thinking for my knights i'm probably just going to paint these on by hand <laughs> i know some of you may be thinking you know that's too much or that's too difficult or that's not worth it but Personally, I think with a little planning, it can be done. Um, it shouldn't be too difficult. And I mean, in my mind, applying transfers has its own kind of redundant aspects to it because I feel like if you want to apply a transfer really well, you need to apply a gloss varnish to the area you're applying it to. And then you need to apply the transfer and then maybe like a microsol to it so it kind of better conforms to the surface and then apply another gloss varnish to it and then apply a matte varnish to make it fit in with everything else so with this you're kind of skipping all that but you have to paint all the little details by hand so and uh you know just to show you how rare these are nowadays this is the first uh, listing i saw on ebay and it's going for about 25 dollars and then shipping was about 17 dollars for one sheet of these transfers and the grail knights had their own transfer sheet and I, I got the new uh, Grail Knight kit, and unfortunately, they do not come with any decals, so a little disappointing. And another note about the heraldry on the horses is that the emblem on these little shield embroidery on the horses, they're always kind of generally facing in the direction of the rider or the horse. So for instance, like uh, I think this kind of falcon emblem, it's facing in the direction of the rider, whereas on the other side, it's facing in the direction of the rider. So it's kind of mirrored based on which side of the horse it's on. So it's facing the direction of the rider. I hope that makes sense. So on the left side of the horse, th this uh, unicorn is facing this way. And then on the other side of the horse, it would be mirrored, if that makes sense. Okay, so here's my thinking on how to most easily apply these icons to the heraldry in a fashion that's kind of the simplest and can create the most uh, consistent results. So I'm thinking if we could just kind of get an image of the detail or the, the symbol we want to paint on, then we can just find where the center point lies and then plot out where the, the symbol, the outermost uh, portions of the symbol on, let's say, the right, the top, the left, and the bottom. And then we can kind of go in and with the uh, symbol, center point established, we can create very basic rudimentary uh, shapes, kind of block in the core volume of, of this uh, symbol. So in this instance with this boar, I'm kind of thinking beyond just the individual kind of fur tufts. I'm thinking like a general kind of horn, a triangle shape. And then I'm thinking another triangle shape here. And then for some of these negative spaces, I can kind of block that in with the, the, the background color. And then I can take the, the, the primary color and then paint little triangles for these little fur clumps. So yeah, I'm thinking I haven't painted these knights yet because I'm still assembling them, but this is just my plan so far. This is just a little video I thought I'd make just so for anyone who's gotten the new Bretonian knights and they want to paint them in the legacy or traditional color schemes and you wanted to know how or if there's any rules and how to do it i hope this could be of help to you if you have any comments or questions uh, feel free to leave those in the comment section below i thank you for watching this video take care have a great day bye bye